every morning, new every morning, great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, great is thy faithfulness. They are new every morning. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, oh Lord, great is thy faithfulness. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah, what a Savior, hallelujah, what a friend, helping, saving, healing, loving, he'll be with thee till the end hallelujah what a savior hallelujah what a friend helping healing Glory to God. Now we dealt with something amazing. Um, we dealt with something amazing yesterday about the 111 uh, anointings that occur when you create joy for your prophet. I want to deal with number seven. I'm going to move fast. The anointing of genius. The anointing to be a genius. Which means that the functionality of your brain now is more advanced. It means that you, your viewpoint is not the same. You don't see things from the same avenue. Your perspective, your opinion has become anointed. Being a genius means that you refuse to waste time. Being a genius means that you could perceive foolishness in the mouth or the mindsets of others. All oh, heaven declares the beauty of the risen Lord. Who can compare to the beauty of the Lord. Forever you will be the Lamb upon the throne. So the genius anointing is where you start preserving yourself from the path of other people because now your time is constructive in the Lord. You're productive, you're fruitful. That's the anointing of genius. And the more genius you become, the more you create pleasure for God. The more genius you become, the more pleasure you create for God. Because now he can enjoy you in your genius state. Your genius state is where now the things that God loves 
it becomes your concern, your focus. That's number seven. Always remember that. That when you are creating joy for your profit, something is happening to your brain. There is a supernatural transformation happening to the brain. Your brain is now seeing things from a different angle. And you're becoming more powerful of a person than you ever been before. Your whole life is in your brain. Your whole life is in your mind. Everything that pertains to you of who you are and what you will become is all in your mind. You can even predict what you're about to uh, uh, produce via your thoughts. Your thoughts snitch on your futuristic path. Your thoughts, if you can't control your mind, you can't control your soul, you can't control your future. Your mind will indicate to you how much of God you're carrying or if you're carrying any of God at all. Your mind is an important signal. You can study your mind to study your rank in the spirit. You can study your mind to understand how well you have pursued the Lord. Your mind will tell you how wise you have um, uh, managed your schedule. Your mentality is a perfect guide to understand whether or not you are moving correct in the earth. Your mind says everything. Remember, King Jesus called Peter Satan, but then he said, I'm calling you Satan because you don't savor the things of God, but you savor the things of men. What was King Jesus talking about his mind? Glory to God. He was talking about his mind. So when he told Peter, get thee behind me, Satan, then he described why he was telling Peter that he was Satan and why he started dealing with the fact of what caused this label of Satan to be on you. Because your mind is not interested in what I'm interested in. Your thought life is not where I am. And because your thought life is not flowing with me, therefore your words came out of another kingdom. You must always remember this, that your words are produced by the kingdom in which you abide in. Your words are produced out of the kingdom in which you live. The power of your soul is that you get to choose which kingdom you want to live in. That's the power of your soul. Your soul gives you authority to choose which kingdom you're going to live out of. After this, I'm going to do a quick teaching on the seed and the harvest. After this, I'll just be on here for a couple more moments concerning this. Now I'm going to deal with the seed and the harvest. The genius mindset makes you aware of how to spend your brain energy, where to invest your brain power, where to exert your energy mentally. Are you seeing this? So, so when, when we deal with uh, genius, genius is knowing where do I assign my brain to flow in 24 hours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, there's power in my words. You listen to my words. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 says, uh, where the word of a king is, there's power. That's why I tell that's how I can know how powerful you're going to be, is if you're listening to me. <laughs> Even me listening to me. <laughs> If I need to tap into power, I'll listen. I'll just listen to me. I have done conferences by watching and listening to what I was saying and discerning an atmosphere to step into the atmosphere and to piggyback off of that and to create another one. To uh, discover the extension of that same atmosphere. God only looks back to gather the information he needs to go forward. Even God looks backwards. But it's only to gather information. 
That's why God said, pit me in remembrance. When God sees that you know what he knows, he feels empowered to do what he knows so that you can know it. I'm not saying it again, Cletus. I'm not saying that again. I'm going to tell you right now, I feel bad for a woman that got... Never mind, I'm not going to talk about it. Glory unto God. But saints, I want to ask you a question. Why does every mechanic, mechanic, plumber, maintenance man, why all of them be sagging on the law? I have never met a mechanic, a maintenance man, um, who else? Plumber, uh, somebody that work on cars. They all be sagging. And, and they always tell them, they're always trying to take, come, come over here, let me show you this liquid oil. Let me come, I don't want to come over there, brother. She, first of all, she, first of all, she, first of all, the first thing that I just said, said that's what it smelled like. Now, number two, <laughs> they be sagging more than the drug boys. And saints, and then another thing, don't you despise those people that always be up there trying to act like they're a thug, but then they wear their pants down. Man, we thugging on the thing. Everybody keep the chair. And then they're up there. You turn around. Nigga got his pants. He got his drawers down. Number one. Let me ask you something, player. If you're not homosexual, why would you have your pants down? That's why I want to know. Because in jail, when you got your pants down, you're telling the man, hey, that's how we like it. You know what I'm saying? Come holler at your boy. Come come talk to us. You see what I'm saying? I'm... The anointing of genius, it creates a supernatural hedge for the mind. They create a supernatural hedge for the mind. The anointing of genius. And when you have the anointing of genius... You will start escaping soul troubles. Hallelujah. You heard what I said? Soul troubles. By the way, as you're listening to me talk about these things, there's something happening to you. I'm taking you through a time travel in these teachings. Like you're going from one glory to the next. That's what I'm doing. I'm giving you words that have glory travel in it. So while you're listening to me, you're being translated to another place of realization, recognition, understanding. Genius makes you a pleasurable encounter for your prophet. And when you're a genius, you can receive more assignments in the Holy Ghost for your prophet. I have people in my ministry that translate my videos to YouTube. That was their genius. Are you seeing this? The idea to translate my videos and learn those things, though they had never did that before. That was their genius. So I want you to see the genius makes you search for things that make you be helpful. Because there's a lot of people that watch me and souls get one just off of YouTube. They don't, they're not on Facebook. They're not on Periscope. But they go to YouTube and that's how they find me. So for them to do that, that was the genius anointing at work in them. Then I have other people that bring me pleasure other ways. But as long as they work their genius, I can go forward without hindrance. Remember what I said. Nobody can stop me, but you can't hinder me. The more inspired your prophet is, the more productive they are. Inspiration is the master of production. You don't create anything without being inspired. Your happiness causes your fruits to multiply. 
Happiness causes fruits to multiply. Your fruit system is a slave to your inspiration, your happiness, your joy. When you become an enjoyment, the prophet can create more, can do more. The brain shuts down when it doesn't have inspiration. The brain ignores God when it doesn't have inspiration. That's why Cain will kill Abel because he wasn't inspired. So even he didn't have something that he could lean on or why he should listen to God. He was in that mindset like, forget it. I don't even, I don't, I don't feel good. I'm, I need to feel good. And that was his solution. How dumb was that? You see, the solution of Cain was if I kill him, I'm going to feel great. The mind the mind of a roach. Genius makes you search out what could I do that is in the same plane as my prophet. I'm not overstepping boundaries. I'm not making stuff hard. Same way, Makai. Makai Chose honor. And Makai produces a lot of stuff. And he take a lot of time to think about creativity. I was watching one video that he made for me. On a page. He made that page. I didn't tell him to make that page. But the genius in him. Now, I'm not saying make no page for me because we already got a lot of pages and stuff like that and stuff like that. So I'm not looking for no other pages. But what I'm just saying, like the activity of genius. I want to say this. There are some of you are watching me right now. Just remember what I'm saying. I came to you because some of you are your lifespan not really going to be this that long. You see what I'm saying? Even your age. You might look and think you're 20 and stuff like that. But God really letting you get some fruit to your account. While you helping me, you're getting fruit to your account. So that when you do go, you can have those fruits. It can be accounted unto you as righteousness and you done stored up treasures in heaven. The power of serving your prophet is that the things that you do in the short period of time that you have with your life, now you're storing up treasures in heaven every time. The anointing to store up treasures. Number eight, the anointing to store up treasures. Everything that you're doing for your prophet is storing up treasures because, you know, when your prophet come to your life, you might think, well, okay, I got 50 years more. I got 20 years more. I got 10 years more. And, and there are some scenarios where the prophet comes into your life because death is at the door. So when your prophet comes, that's why sometimes you make plans. You make plans like you have forever. But. When your prophet comes to you, just wisdom, you should become suspicious about your time on earth. You should become suspicious. When your prophet comes to you, you start, you should start thinking, uh oh. For God to now manifest himself to me in the flesh. Time is. When God comes to you, remember when God came to Sodom and Gomorrah, that was it for them. Are you seeing this? When God shows up through Samuel to talk to Eli, that's it for him. When God shows up as Isaiah to talk to Hezekiah, that's it for him. One of the things that you want to remember is that when the prophet shows up, you know that your life is now being judged 
and that's it for you basically. I'm So when Moses came to Pharaoh, that's it for Pharaoh. That's it for the children of Israel too. But if they obey prophet, boom. But they started doing their own thing. You see what I'm saying? They lost track of why the prophet came. And then what was already pending against them occurred. Are you seeing this? So Pharaoh, that was his last days on earth when Moses came and showed up and appeared. That was his time was up. The Egyptian army, that was their time up. Are you seeing this? When Daniel showed up in the kingdom, the people that put him in the lion's den, that was their last days on earth. Before they ever put him in the lion's den, Daniel's presence as a prophet of God was judging them. Remember, they went to the king and said, let's change the laws against uh, this whole prayer thing because they had an agenda. The king didn't know what they was doing. But they was mad at Daniel. And remember, that was their last days on earth. They was fed to the lions. So that means that they was murdered by those same lions. Those, those, those were their last days on earth. So when the prophet shows up, your life is coming to an end. The wise thing for you to do is surrender peacefully, joyfully. Because when you show God other plans and other things, the stuff not beneficial. And I'm not talking to you from speculation. Like I know people right now that's not in their body. Because while they're following me, they get sidetracked. Other things become more important. And then the enemy start telling them things like, you know. They start making plans. But they don't know that their time is up. I could personally talk about someone that I knew that was young. And um, I remember there was a time frame. I prophesied to them. The person didn't fulfill my prophecy. But they're not in their body. I know where they at. But they're not in their body. God stripped them of their body. Because I had released the prophetic in that zone. So it, um, the time was up. And uh, the spirit took them out. They couldn't find the cause of death. The person didn't have any scars on their body. The person didn't have any sickness or disease take them out. They could not discover the cause of death according to physical laceration or anything. But God took them out of their body. When I spoke to them, their time was already up. But they didn't understand that it was up. So they kept living their life. And they're young. But God took them out. Because what the Lord told me, if they were to continue, it's like they're going to proceed in the evil, the wickedness. And that word judges. So I, I just say that to encourage you all on here. You know, if I was you and you was me, I would know how to handle you. I would know how to handle you. Because number one, when we think about it in a wisdom sense, what really is all important to me other than where I'm going to be after this life. Because I can pick many things first. I could say, oh, you know, I can pick everything first, but if that stuff not going to get me any protection in the next life, it's called vanity and really insanity. So a lot of times the enemy will get you to not understand why that prophet is there, the prophet not there, to suck up to you, to make you feel good, to make you feel like you're being respected. We ain't come to respect you. Number one, the demons down there in hell waiting for you didn't come to respect you. We didn't come to make you feel like we 
We didn't come for all of that. We came because, truth be told, your ass is grass most times. You, you be on your way to hell. You be full of demons and full of demonic thoughts and ways, and you be going to hell with a scripture and a Bible in your hand talking about you love God. So when we show up, we didn't come to like, with that small talk, we came with some heavier equipment. And then also, I want to say this, the definition of love have been so wrongly demonstrated. Children think that their parents don't love them because their parents won't let them go play outside when their parents tell them, no, not today. They define that as they don't love me. But their parent probably saw that there was a weird man walking around the park with a hoodie on. And they feel an unction to protect their child and say, no, we're not playing today. And the child like, why? And they can see further than their child. We've been taught that love is have your way. That's why a lot of times people are in a honeymoon stage in relationships. And so n nothing, nothing is really understood about the other party. You got to know who people are when they're angry. You got to know who people are when they're corrected. Everybody is your friend at a workplace if you're the boss until you tell them, I don't like that you came into work five minutes late. Oh, well, well she came into work too. Yeah, I understand, but I don't like that you came into I needed you to be here three minutes ago. Yeah, but okay, I, that was my first time coming in late. You see that? And that boss never saw that behavior in the person. But it's just because the boss is correcting them. If the boss never corrects them, the boss is going to think that they're an angel. The prophet come to draw out of you the stuff that you don't know inside of you. Some of you all have rivers of living water, but you got sewage water as well. You got a lot of BS inside of you. The water is supposed to be purified so that the rivers of living water can flow. Anybody that lets you stay with sewage water inside of you is evil. They hate you. If somebody lets you stay with sewage water inside of you, they are your biggest adversary. People that joke around with your wicked ways and people that don't put no pressure on you to do righteousness and people that don't inspire you to humble yourself are the demons sent to your life. People that don't encourage your path of righteousness. You're on a straight and narrow path. They can't even celebrate you because they're demonic. No demon celebrates someone on the God path. No demon. No demon. You'll be shocked to find out. I already know this, but some of you all will be shocked to find out the day that you exit out of this life, how the whole earth was full of demons. The cop that you saw driving down the street was full of demons. The person wa wa working at that restaurant was full of demons. They was nice to you. They smiled, have a nice day, but it was full of demons. This whole life is not correct. That's why we have so much wrong things happening. Texas just went through a major storm. Major, major. People's, people's, people, people were literally dying. Major storm. I spoke in the vein of this. I told you that in February, we'll see a strong wind gust. Why did the power go out in Texas? Was it the snow? No, it wasn't the snow. It was the wind gust. You're not hearing what I said. I started off in February telling you that we was going to see a sign that everywhere on earth, everywhere, I said, it don't matter where you at. There was going to be a wind gust. 
God even let the wind gust come to my own backyard. When I say that, I'm saying the state of Texas. They couldn't keep things together. Saints, imagine this. Somebody might say, well, no, it wasn't the wind gust. It was the freeze. Remember, nothing freezes without wind. <laughs> you got to understand, even a refrigerator is full of air. It's full of wind that gets cold. It's cold wind. So then it starts freezing the objects in there. Without the freezing wind, there's nothing freezing. The anointing of genius. Number, number, uh, I also want to say this. I see you said I heard the wind and it was loud and long lasting. The reason why things go on down here is because of uh, the hearts of men. Remember, I prophesied to you. I said the reason for the freezing weather is because of the coldness of men's heart. That's the word of the Lord. It's the word of the Lord. And when you're when you're of God, God will let you. You're down here. He'll protect you. You won't die. But you'll still see the, the ragingness of God. God's wrath is nothing to play with. God's wrath is a serious thing. It's his, it's his wild side. It's where he operates as if he lost his mind. And remember, Moses knew when God got like that, Moses got nervous. And God said, let me pick the blood. Um, let me pick the blood of the animals. And he lifted up offerings and he started sowing. And he told them, get me an animal so I can sacrifice. Because he tried to use the seed principle to calm God down. Well, how did he know to even use that tactic? Because Moses was a glory prophet. He was a God prophet. So he knew what God loved. He knew that God loved honor. So when God felt dishonor and he was angry and pissed off, God was slain in people left to right. Moses got nervous. Moses said, okay, let me calm you down. Let me do something that you love in hopes that you would chill. I don't know, but I'm going to try. You imagine God is a spirit. That means that you can't track him and say, okay, God is over there so I, I can lock him down so that he don't destroy. No, God, God is a spirit. So he goes where he wants and the earth is just like an ant to him. Like you look on this earth and you hear them say for you to get over to, I remember going to Dubai, India. I think the flight was like 18 hours. Then I went to Zimbabwe. I think that flight was about 19, 18, 20 hours or something like that. We hear about these long travels, but when we deal with God, I'm going to tell you right now, God's... Um, God's radar of the earth is just a blink away. It's nothing to him to access anywhere on earth. And everybody on earth is like a little small uh, speck. It's nothing. And so it's like when, when you realize the greatness of God and the, 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 the feebleness of this flesh, all the more it should quicken you to start realizing, uh-oh, like, how is my attitude in this season that I'm in? How am I dealing with the authority that God has given to me? Have I been lying? Have I lied to my boss? My boss told me where was I? I told him that I was at lunch, but really I was hanging out somewhere. What, 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 am I being in the fear of God concerning how I handle myself? with the little time that I have. I said this one time, but King Jesus was only on earth for 33 years. Only 33. The creator of the universe didn't even stay on earth for 70 and 80 and 90 years. The creator of the universe did not stay on the earth for 100 years or 120 
years. Like how it talks about the number of men, how long a man can live. He didn't even stay that, that long of a time. Only 33 years. Only 33 years. And I, I have this thought in my mind and, and uh, the Lord telling me to speak it. If you even make it till after 30, you should be very suspect. You, you hear the word of the Lord? If you make it to after 30, you, 33, you should be suspect because all of your days are numbered. The creator of the universe didn't even live that long. He came down and got, got out. Boom. His spirit is here, but what I'm saying in that body that he used in that day. Some of you all should also be cautious of some things too. The level of work that I do in this short time frame is the reason why I'm working like this. And if you're smart, you will study my life and realize, oh, oh why is there so much stuff? Like some of you all, you might see me do a lot of videos. You don't even keep up with the videos. But what you doing with your time? Because these videos are going to judge you. Every video that I'm doing is going to judge you. So imagine if you don't even take the video serious. Okay, he, he going to go live again. Okay. Bet. The anointing of genius is so powerful. Then I want to deal with this as well. The anointing to be unoffendable. The anointing to be unoffendable. Remember this. The anointing to be unoffendable. This is anointing that flows when you're creating joy for your prophet. When you become unoffendable, that means that you receive a grace from God to never criticize God. You receive teammate grace. You start realizing that I'm not working against my prophet, I'm working with my prophet. So what spirit is making me angry at him? What spirit is making me fight him? What, what spirit is making me critique him? What spirit is making me criticize him? Because this, this is the team leader. This is my coach. How am I make it to the championship if I don't want to listen to the plays of what the coach is telling me will be successful? The anointed to be unoffendable is an anointing that you receive where the enemy cannot secretly converse with your soul. The enemy can't talk to your soul in secret. The enemy cannot bother your soul in secret. The enemy cannot cause you to do something unseemingly that can abort your progress your graduation, your crown. The anointing to be unoffendable means that you stay in the spirit of the fear of the Lord and the spirit of humility concerning everything that comes out of your prophet's mouth. When your prophet is talking to you, you know that the prophet has been given an unction by the Father to speak to you. So therefore, you can respond to that with the right spirit with the right mentality, with the right grace, with the right attitude, because you realize that that's God's will. And so you, 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 you freely receive it. When you're unoffendable, you will let the prophet do surgery on you. And the prophet could um, work on the areas in which there is a disease where there's sickness, where there is trauma, where there is blood clots, blood clots, where there is damages and injuries. 